Hey there YouTube fans, AC Productions here and today I wanted to do a short video on what just had happened to me with my R3 in case this instance where it has happened to you. Now I also did a video before where when you had turned on the gauge that all the gauge would be just white with no numbers or anything. I'll have a link on top of this video so you could see what I'm talking about on that instance is pretty much when you're turning your key and you notice that there's no numbers on your gauges because your battery is really low and couldn't supply enough power. If you want to check out that video, link is up here. In this video, it's going to be almost similar, but not quite. I was actually adjusting my auxiliary lights that I had installed on the R3, as you see in this picture. And upon doing so, all of a sudden, all the lights and everything just went out on the, um, on the bike. And I was like thinking, what the heck just happened? The bike was fully charged, so I don't think it's a battery thing. I was thinking maybe it popped the fuse. But let me show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, it's off now, but if I turn the key all the way to the on position, nothing is going on over here. It is completely nothing. There is no light. Nothing is turning on whatsoever. I have it on the tender. I usually always have my R3 on the tender no matter if it's summer or winter. And as you can see, on the tender it actually says green. And as you can see, it goes all the way to the bike. I also have a battery and I was thinking maybe that the battery tender, maybe there's something wrong with the battery tender. Even though it's showing green, maybe it's not really charging. So I put the voltmeter to it and the voltmeter showing that the battery is good, fully charged. So I'm like thinking, what the heck is going on? So I decided to check the fuses. Like I said, that'd be like normally the first thing I would go check because I do have the auxiliary lights that I had connected on the R3 connected to the, the headlights um, connector. So I was like thinking, okay, maybe I popped the fuse. Maybe I was like too long on the bike because I did have the, the lights on, but not the bike running. So the, the engine wasn't on, it was just the lights on only. So I was thinking maybe I was working on the bike too long, maybe I drained the battery or something or, or whatever. So I was thinking, maybe, or maybe I had popped the fuse. So normally when something like that happens, I usually go straight to the fuse. So as you can see, the battery voltage on, the battery is okay. So now I was like, all right, let me go check the fuses. So here's my light. I have a, a light that goes on top of my head. So if you see it moving around, it's because it's on my head. But uh, anyway, uh, so in order to get to your fuse box, you have to remove your, your uh, driver's seat. So as you can see, I already did that because I was trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, and I figured I'd just make a video of this just in case this has happened to you and you're just mind boggled as just as I was on what it could be that would cause the bike to just go out like that. So your fuse box is right here. It could be a little bit different location on yours because I do have the R1 style tail. So I had to reconfigure a little bit on location of things. But when I had checked the fuses, let's go ahead and pop this out real quick for you guys. So here's my fuses and I checked every single one of them. All of them checked out to be good. So everything was good there. So I was like, all right, so maybe some another fuse had maybe blown or popped. So I do have a lot of things on my bike. As you could see the whole wiring mess, I do have LED lights. I got tire pressure monitoring system. I have GPS cable, power cable to this bike. I have a lot of things to this bike. So I was like, all right, so let me go check the other fuses. Maybe something had blown there that it could cause the, the lights to, to go out. So I checked every fuse. I have a fuse over here. I have a fuse in here. I got another fuse over here. I checked them all. Every single, all the fuses checked out good. None of them were popped. So I was like, what the heck is going on? I almost came down to the fact that I almost had to take my bike for the first time to a shop. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to do that. So I was just like thinking, what could it be? I was mind boggled for a, a couple of minutes. And I was thinking, you know what? I'm going to check something that also has a fuse. But I doubt that it could even be this, which is pretty much the starter solenoid, which is right there. So I was like, you know what, let me check it for the heck of it. I doubt it could be because it, it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to press the button to make the bike start and it doesn't want to start because there's obviously no power whatsoever going to the bike. So I decided to check it. So let's go ahead and check it and then uh, let me show you right here. Let me just get this out of the way. So here is your starter relay, which is pretty much located underneath the passenger side seat. 
So when you lift it, you're going to notice right away there's going to be a 30 amp fuse right here. Now that that's not the actual fuse that goes to your starter relay. That's actually your spare fuse. In case the one that goes in, in here pops, you'll have a spare right away and you're able to get back on the rope. So when you lift up the boot over here, this is how it looks like. Now I'm going to put the camera on the tripod so I could be more steady with the camera and you guys could see what I'm doing. Okay, so now I got the the camera on the tripod and sorry if my light's kind of moving around. I'll try to do the best I can and not moving around so much. Alright, so here is your starter relay which is located underneath the passenger side seat. It has a big rubber boot on it. You have a spare fuse at 30 amps right here in case the one that's in here pops. So like I said, I checked everywhere on the bike. All the fuses, all the fuses were good. And I was just like wondering what the heck's going on. I was like, why won't the bike turn on? So the last place I didn't check was the starter relay. And that's what we're right doing right now, right here. So in order to get to the starter relay, you just get the boot and go ahead and move it back. As you can see, there is some exposed wire just because I'm not sure what exactly happened there that it actually uh, started coming off. So anyway, uh, to, in order to get the, the to remove the starter relay, it is it's uh, you could just pop it out of here. It is actually not really connected to anything really. I mean, it is connected. It's just that it's not. Um, I don't even know how to say it, but it's just not in one place where you could where you need to undo some bolts. It's just uh, located inside this like little rubber box boot or whatever. Anyway. So once you get it out of, there, out of there, it actually makes it a little bit easier to disconnect it. So now to disconnect it, just pull back on this rubber boot, like so, like that. Now grab these two uh, clips right here, push them in, and they're going to extend out. So when you push them in, they're going to extend out like that. So go ahead, push them in like that. So grab the other end, and then just kind of uh, wiggle the connector. It might be a little bit uh, hard to do. But just try to do the best you can on doing so. Alright, so like I said, moving it around, wiggling, jiggling it uh, to get it off. So once you're able to get it off, just pull it out. And it pretty much looks like that. Just the plug, and then you got your thing over here. Putting that off to the side. Now you got your positive and negative cables that goes straight to the battery. And to the starter and all that good stuff. Alright, so upon looking at it, as you could see, the fuse is popped on the starter relay. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the heck? Out of all places, you know, this would have been li literally the last place I was going to check uh, to see. Because I was like, there's no way in heck that the starter relay was going to blow when I was working on the lights. But as you can see, let me get this uh, fuse out so you guys can see it. There we go. And right there, as you can see... Yeah, let me zoom in so you guys can see it better. It's probably a little bit blurry. But anyway, you guys could see that it, there we go. As you could see right there, it's already, it's popped, it's blown. I would have never thought that this was going to be the culprit of why my bike doesn't want to turn on. Well, luckily, all R3s come with a spare fuse right there, as you can see. Right, right there, you could see. All right, so now to change out that fuse and uh pretty much get the bike back to normal so pretty much that's pretty much the video on why i wanted to do this because in case this is has in case this was something that happened to you and you're like wondering why and you checked all your fuses and you also want to make use something to pull the fuse out so i'm using the old fuse to pull the new fuse out it's just a little rubber pocket i've never used this fuse ever so it was a little uh, hard to get it out of the rubber pocket. All right, so just in case this has been something that has happened to you and you're just wondering what the heck could it be on why the bike doesn't want to turn on or start or whatever, you may want to check the spot. You'll be surprised, just like I was. All right, so now go ahead. Got our fuse. Now we're going to go ahead and put it in its new location there or the same location. So let's just go ahead and pop that little guy in there. All right, pop that in there. Now we're going to go ahead and plug it back in. All right. There we go. Plug it back in. Make sure that the little arms are connected right there. Once you do that, now we're going to go ahead and put the rubber boot back on. Like so. And then we're going to put it right back in its little uh, rubber square spot. Right there like so. And since I already just uh, used that spare fuse that I came with, it would be a good idea to 
put another spare 30 amp fuse there in case something like this happens again I'll have a spare uh, to go by all right so let's go to the front of the bike and uh, turn it on all right so let's go to the front of the bike and get it off the tripod here all right let's go to the front all right now let's turn on our key and there you go voila I can't believe it that's pretty much what it was well now we know now if uh, you know that you turn your key and you have no power like we had at the beginning uh, showing you that after you check all of your fuses your main fuse box and any other additional um, fuses you have with your light kit or if you have any of that kind of stuff on your bike check those fuses and then lastly check your starter solenoid uh, relay uh, fuse and now everything's back to normal actually I mean let me start the bike uh, before I actually put everything back together uh, let's turn on the pump turn that off a little loud in here and let's see my lights so they're working and yes they are all right so that pretty much was it that was actually uh what had happened turn off the lights all right guys well if you found this video helpful please hit that like button if you have any questions leave them in the comments below if you haven't yet subscribed don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching